okay? All right. Breaking out, breaking out some oldies, okay? Hello, everyone, and welcome here to beautiful Bungie HQ in scenic Bellevue, Washington. Uh, my name's Andy, and I'm going to be your host today. And today we have the distinct opportunity to go ahead and show off some brand new stuff coming in Destiny 2 Into the Light. But fret not, I won't be the only one going ahead and telling you about it. I've joined by three members of the Destiny development team who we'll go ahead and introduce here right away. Starting directly to my left, Mr. Tom Farnsworth, how are you doing today? Great, thank you, Andy. I am uh, doing great. I had coffee for yeah. breakfast on the way here. I'm a little... Ready to go, excited yeah. to share uh, all the great work the team has done yeah. uh, the, the past many months. And uh, just, just for context about me, yeah. I'm the, uh, the creative lead on Into the Light, and I'll be here with you the next few weeks to talk about it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff in store. And of course, we're joined by senior narrative designer, Mr. J Jerome Viernich. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Also had coffee. Nice. On the highway <laughs> while right. screaming at passing cars. So. Quite a drive in as well. And for yeah. the folks at home who may not know you as well as we've had the opportunity to, to, to learn about you over the past couple days, uh, who are you and what do you do here at Bungie? I am a senior narrative designer, which means if you hear as a loud as it goes, guys. Or if you read it on screen, one of us typed it into a tiny little box Exciting. at some point months before. Hanging out with Excel lots these days? A absolutely. There it is. Tiny yeah. words, tiny boxes. That's me. <laughs> it's an important tool, obviously. Absolutely. And of course, last but very not least, one of the most deadly I've ever seen to rock the thumbsticks, especially in these past couple days, the one and only Mr. Noah Lee, activity designer here on Destiny 2. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah Lee. I'm an activity designer on Destiny 2 Into the Light. And I have the distinct pleasure of introducing us to Onslaught so we can see all the really cool things that we have in store. I'm a long time player. Better. I've been playing since Destiny 1. And as a player turned dev, I'm Check. excited to show Check. off all the stuff we have planned. Is that louder? I'm just so excited to see what's awesome. going on. Awesome. Well, hey, welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. To everyone in chat, I see a lot of activity in there as well. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today as well. But yes, today we're going to go ahead and kick things off by looking at Onslaught, which is a brand new activity coming in, coming in Destiny 2 into the light. Uh, for those of you out there that are Twit enjoyers, that I had a chance to go ahead and see what we've been posting the last week. Uh, we went ahead and released some key art last week that is now up on screen. You can see here, uh, there's a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and just start. Tom, can you tell us a little bit about what Onslaught is? Yeah, so Onslaught is a new uh, three-player activity that, that, that's the, kind of the core of Into the Light. It's, a, uh, it's available to all players. Yeah. And you can kind of see in this, this key art, like this is a kind of aspirational view of what Onslaught is in game. Yeah. It's a, it's a new... Uh, wave defense uh, activity. Uh, it, it, it takes inspiration from a, you know, a lot of modes we, we, we've looked at, like uh, in other games and our games yeah. th throughout our, our kind of history. And you can see here, you're, you're in the last city. Yeah. And I, I'm really excited that, that our players are going to be able to, like, the guardians are going to be able to hop into this space and, you know, defend the last city and, you know, eventually take the fight uh, to the witnesses' forces here. And you can, yeah. you can kind of see, uh, like, you know, you got our three guardians. That they're kind of ringed in defenses. Yeah. You also got like the pyramids in the sky. That's right. Yeah. And there's even some like kind of pyramid terraforming going on in the background. In there. the city itself too. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And they are at the our city, doorstep. And there's a few other locations too, but we'll, maybe we'll talk about later. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you know, also too, Jerome, we are. This is you know not the first time obviously we've ever had to go ahead and defend ourselves on our own turf, but never quite like this before. Our heels are dug in. We're in the last city right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on here? Absolutely. So for the past several seasons, the Forces of the Witness have been closing their vice grip mm -hmm. around the soul system. The Witness is inside the Traveler doing nefarious deeds, enacting the final shape. Right. Time is on its side. Yeah. We have worked with uh, ancient magics, esoteric rituals, yeah. bargaining with uh, our old foes in order to send someone through the portal and uh, establish a bridge, and we chose Crow. Yeah. Now, until he makes contact with us, we are back at home sharpening our knives. Yeah. Now, the witness, of course, will do everything that it can to keep us on this side of the portal. Understand. Which means unleashing every bit of its resources, every uh, part of its power against us to keep us pinned yeah. in the last city. Um, so this is about breaking out and uh, discovering new power, yeah. right? Sharpening ourselves, yeah. finalizing our builds, and getting some new toys so that we can face down the witness. That's right, and we're also getting some help from a tried and true sharpener of Guardians as well. Shax is gonna be helping us out as well, right? Absolutely. What? Where some see calamity, Shax sees opportunity. Yeah. And he is gonna be opening up his arsenal 
for us to uh, enjoy. I think we'll hear about that next week, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yep. uh, yeah, he'll be your vendor, and uh, I'm really excited for players to hear from him. Awesome. Finally, spent a lot Shaq of time does something. It's always good to spend more time with Shaq's. Inspirational, to say the least. Absolutely. Uh, high volume. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's the best part of him. You just throw more grenades. Oh, Reminder to everyone. Never go wrong. May it, yeah. may it be a hint to us all. Uh, and of course, no, there's a lot also too going on here. I see turrets. I see other activity defenses. Uh, obviously, we're going to jump into some gameplay here. But before we do, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see when we dive in to play some Onslaught here live in just a bit? Yeah, of course. So something that's really cool about Onslaught compared to a lot of our activities in Destiny is, like Tom said, it's not an offensive. It's a defensive. Our goal is to defend the ADU or advanced yeah. defense unit, which allows us to build our defenses like turrets, tripwires, decoys. And the main goal is to make sure that that thing stays up for all of your waves that you're fighting in. Yeah. And if that goes down at any point, regardless if you're on playlist, normal, or on legend difficulty, your game will end. So yeah. the main goal is to keep your defenses Damn. safe, okay, build them okay. up, upgrade them, and try to get as far as you can. Yeah. Legend difficulty. Interesting. Already dropping some hints. I like what I'm hearing. You know, I had to do it. And Obviously. another thing, just really quickly, yeah, is we had a lot of learnings from some of our activities in the seasons, like deep dives and the coil, where we know players like when we escalate difficulty mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. So that's a key feature of Onslaught. You go from wave one to wave 50, each one, each 10, escalating in difficulty as we're going to see in gameplay. And that serves a really cool opportunity for players to test their builds yeah. and, you know, the, the waves of enemies that we're fighting against are the whetstone by which we are sharpening ourselves. Excellent. Yes, build crafters, you're on notice. Be prepared for what's to come. All right, well, I say there's no time Damn. like the present. We are seeing a lot of requests in chat for gameplay. I think we can go ahead and dive on in. Uh, the throne world. Noah, would you mind returning to your throne world briefly to go ahead and kick things off here? My tithes. Obviously, yeah, we got to get some tithes for the man himself. Uh, in the meantime, really quickly, obviously, with Onslaught being a brand new activity, we're going to kick things off in a very different way. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see when we go ahead and start things off? Yeah. You're going to see it in the gameplay here in just a second, but uh, Onslaught is a, a kind of establishing a, a defensive kind of like beachhead in these contested territories <coughs> where we're like trying to, you know, claw space back from the witness. Certainly. And we're going to see it in Midtown here in a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so players, you know, start off with you and two other maybe friends you, you've, you've found uh, uh, that, 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 that you, you play with all the time or maybe yeah. you match make you in with. And uh, you're going to uh, work, push forwards with Shax's Red Jacks yeah. that you're going to see here. You'll... Uh, establish a defensive area, you'll deploy the advanced defense unit, and you'll start placing defenses. Yeah. As Noah said, there's uh, there's turrets, there's trip mines, there's yeah. decoys. decoys. The de decoys is our favorite little sweepy That's bot. That's right, yep. And, uh, Back to help once again. And you can you can upgrade those too. Like the, yeah. the way the activity works is you defeat enemies to collect scrap, yeah. which is our, which is our, our, our currency, mm -hmm. and then you can spend that to deploy these defenses. And you're gonna have to be kind of selective. Like each of these defensive locations can, can move around throughout the activity. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and oh, here we go. We oh, got, awesome. We already got some already. here. Yes. So we're over here trying to create a foothold for our ADU, uh, supported by Shax's lovely Red Jacks. You know, we love, no one loved them. Oh, and yeah. as soon as we've cleared out the Elixni that are here, we're the Fallen, uh, our ADU's here. As we see, we got some batteries in tow. And this begins our first really interesting part of this activity, which is our purchase phase. Killing enemies will grant you scrap, like we see in the top left, and we have 30 seconds to pick one of a suite of upgrades. Rockin' Midnight too, by the way. You can buy for a thousand. Uh, decoy, which is our lovely sweeper bot here, and turrets. I know people are very curious about turrets, so I'm just gonna buy this first. There we go. But we have uh, our lovely guests, Midtown Matt, by the way. who have helped create this activity in our playtest team. They're yep. with me, helping fill out the fire team, and uh, they're building their defenses. It's always best to have some solid teammates. And also, too, uh, for the folks in chat noticing some weapons, uh, go ahead and, and just go ahead and observe everything you can possibly see on screen. Oh, it's okay. We, uh, we're we going to have plenty of time to dig through those inventory screens. Got kinetic yeah, trimmers. Is, uh, Got to see that? The things they may have seen in the key art. Uh, but also, too, so, Jerome, we're here, obviously, going ahead and doing this for a reason, right? The ADU is here for a purpose. Can you help us understand a little bit about the role that plays in the defense that we're mounting against the witness? Absolutely. Um, when all of the Guardians and their allies enter the portal to face down the Witness, mm -hmm. Earth will be essentially undefended. Yeah. So it's important that we establish solid defenses now um, and claw back as much territory as we can in advance of our assault. 
I also want to just point out... Uh, Hung Jury just dropped, by the way. I know we're not going to be able to look at it, and uh, we'll see the weapons next week, oh, yeah. but uh, we've got some beautiful new lore yeah. on those weapons, and so any of those lore hounds, make yeah. sure you check out those tabs. Yeah, it's, really uh, nice. we, we will be only uh, maybe looking at whatever happens to show up on the stream today, but yes, this is the, the Brave Arsenal, as it will be known. Players will get a chance to go ahead and be more intrinsically involved with this. We'll have more information on that in the coming I'm weeks. Getting, but, like, uh, yeah, I'm getting, like, Forge vibes. those out there that like, are observing... Like, from Black some, Armory. Some, Previous Guardian favorite weapons out there, uh, worry not. You've got lots of information to learn over the next coming weeks. But yeah, I want to kind of get started on kind of what players have been seeing since we've been talking about Please, yeah, yeah. As a whole, uh, as we're able to see, like, the ADU has a health over its head right here, and we have enemies in waves coming to try to de defeat it. If you've been paying attention, we have high value targets that are mini bosses or elites called saboteurs, which drop. Uh, these repair batteries and for other attempted players we can see that there are champions involved so you know bring your champion weapons <laughs> make sure that you are well uh equipped for this we have different waves and different augments like we're seeing on wave three yeah. that demand your immediate attention yeah we know destiny players like to run and gun so we try to get you out of the space of the adu sometimes mm -hmm. so that you can kind of do those objectives to make sure that oh yeah i can explore midtown and all these other spaces uh, when we have the other maps that you see. Yeah, Crucible enjoyers know this space pretty well. It'll be a chance for everyone to go ahead and check it out. But also, too, actually, no, thank you, Noah, for checking that out. Uh, obviously, the pyramids have been busy in here helping to go ahead and mount this offensive. Yeah, I think uh, they have an eye for decoration. Yeah, honestly, they're, and they're doing a great job. i got to give them credit. Actually, they, keep, good. they keep it consistent. Um, but, Jerome, this is, these are pyramid ships in our own backyard that are going to go ahead and just try and terraform the city, or can you help us learn what's going on here? Well... They don't have to do anything. I yeah. mean, the witness is doing what it wants to do, and if we don't yeah. stop it, then it's game over. Yeah. So they really just need to to keep us pinned. Um, the witness is inevitable. There's no way we could kill, defeat every one of the witness's soldiers. Right. Uh, there's no way we could, you know, fight them one by one. We'll try. We have to. We have to deal with the witness head on. Yeah. Inside the traveler. Yeah. And uh, we'll do that soon. So also too, you know, obviously getting to go ahead and, and send players away from the ADU is pretty significant when it comes to accomplishing all of the tasks in front of you here in Onslaught. But uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about the defenses as well? Like we, I think we see some trip mines up already set and ready to go. Yeah, you, um, you can see the, the horizontal beams, those are trip mines. As you upgrade them, the colors will change. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to do more damage and, and, and kind of fire off more Trip mines charges. get more charges. Uh, yep. And they get more in size. If you upgrade it, you'll go from one trip mine to two, as we see here, mm -hmm. which is really nice. I'm going. Ah, so and then we've also got the, the trip turret, mine so grenade. Okay. Show off a turret in a second. Oh yeah, uh, right those as well. They, they, they when, when you, oh, yeah. you can upgrade those three, three, three levels as well. They change color. They, they deal more damage. They get more health. Yeah, the uh, fire rate increases actually also. Yep, and and then we've also got Sweepy Bot who also those decoys. Uh, Mostly just gain health and change. You guys are saying I need to turn notifications off. What are you talking about, guys? Like each oh, you talking defensive locations. You're, you're, like we're gonna kind of randomly pick yeah. defenses for you to deploy, yeah. and it's up to you kind of to make the best choices and use your limited resources, yeah. the scrap that you're collecting, to to, to make the best ch the choices there because you're not gonna have all the currency you need right off the bat to like you know of to, course. To deploy everything and upgrade yeah. everything. You're gonna have to be like, no, we want maybe we want this turret, maybe oh. They, they were, it seems like enemies are coming more from this direction. Maybe we should have these trip mines. Right, yeah. Let's focus our, our attention and abilities maybe in a different direction. Let the trip mines and turn. My question is, do we move direction. out of yeah. this area? Yeah, something I want to bring up is we actually have a bonus objective going on right now. Finn? We have secondary objectives that occasionally appear uh, in waves. And this one is just to complete the wave within a certain amount of time. And if you complete that while you're defending the ADU, you got to make sure that's alive. You'll actually get a reward, which is a uh, heavy ammo crate that will refill your ammo. When you get higher up in the waves and you get more difficult enemies and like larger waves of, of stuff, like that is definitely something you're going to be trying to get. Yeah. And that kind of ties into the team coordination you can do. Like if you have a good team in the higher difficulties, uh, you're going to need a little bit more coordination. You might need somebody to go out and do the augments and somebody to go out and do the critical objectives. Yeah, and also too, so just to make sure, Tom, as well, this isn't the only AD you are going to be defending in this activity. It moves around the map. Okay. So right. as Noah said That's earlier, there's 50 waves in yeah. our, our, our challenge version of this activity. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's a playlist version, which is just one location. Mm -hmm. It's easy, oh. quick, fun to hop into. You do 10 waves and you're done. And then there's the challenge version, which we're showing here. So mm -hmm. there's uh, 50 waves or, or, or five sets of 10 waves yes. uh, is how we like to talk about it. Mm. And... Uh, with each of those sets uh, of ways we move 
around the map between three different locations. Okay, got it. And so you'll you'll start at one ADU, you'll defend it, you'll take the fight to the witness for a little bit, you'll yeah. come back, and then you'll build up defenses more and then go fight a boss. Yeah, which is what we're seeing as well right now. Like we're on board a pyramid ship now, right? Yeah, this is a this is one of my favorite phases. Uh, where instead of defending the ADU, we take the fight to them. And as you see, we cultivate a spark of light and it's time to run it down, destroy the witnesses, lieutenants, and, you know, do a fun backflip. Give me birthplace place vibes. That off. <laughs> do the backflip. It's important. If you don't do the backflip, chat's gonna be very upset. I can already tell. Very. Here we go. Look at that. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> you make it look so easy, Noah. Cause I'm just good. I'm just good. <laughs> he is good. He's doing, he's doing pretty well. I, I'm not gonna, gonna, not gonna We're disagree. also on the first <laughs> set of waves. So. It's gonna get a little spicier later. The, yeah. the first few waves are, first, are, are you know, they're kind of like the training wheels. Right, yeah. Cause you were saying too, there's there's a, uh, a 10 wave version of this and a 50, was yes, it? Yes, there's yeah. a 10 wave version That's called right. Onslaught Playlist. Okay. Uh, you know, if you're in for, a, you wanna be in for a short session, I think that's definitely the place for you. Onslaught, in our experience from playtesting, it's really easy to lose track of time and just mm -hmm. kind of keep going. You're all, you, you can always be like, you know, just one more wave, a few more, you know, a few more sets, and then you're like, dang, it's been an hour. Like, it's actually crazy. Right. Yeah, Noah, yeah. I, got a, I got a question, if you yeah. don't mind. How do you decide whether to unlock new defenses or upgrade the ones you've already got? So it really is a risk-reward thing. As we're seeing, like, when you upgrade defenses, they will exponentially increase in price, which means that you have to make a decision every purchase phase, like, do I want to save my money to potentially upgrade something down the line and also hope that that defense, you know, lives long enough to be upgraded? Or am I just going to bite the bullet and buy something now that can help me immediately? My strategy usually is that in the first few waves, I will not buy anything to, like, just save up for later and usually my teammates will do something. Yeah. That's where communication comes in. If you just do that by yourself, Dude, that I don't guy think just your teammates will be very the trip happy mines. with you. As always, keeping the comms crisp is oh, very hard, give a higher difficulty levels. Because, uh, yeah, we're just in the kind of the fledgling waves of this right now. But, yeah, when we were doing our playtest yesterday, things got crazy in a hurry. I hope we get to see uh, some more of the craziness we saw yesterday. But oh, I don't want to spoil anything for chat. Obviously, there's plenty to be discovered in this. Something I neglected to mention, which we've been doing yeah. this whole time, is uh, the ADU batteries will actually heal it. Kind of similar to, like, Forges in the Black Armory from my, my real vets yeah. out there. Um, <laughs> And the ADU, the enemies are naturally compelled to come over here and like attack it, they'll shoot it, they'll knife at it. But also if there's any enemies that stay in the radius of the ADU, you'll see it'll turn red yeah. and damage will start to tick. So that's when you need to throw your ADU batteries in there and you'll get scrap for that. But if your ADU's full on health, you'll actually get three times the amount of scrap. So it's in your best interest to try to keep it as healthy as possible because you might be able to the snowball. The tiny exotic glaive guys with Helm of 14 is going to be nuts here. Later levels in, in like the 40s and 50s, maybe it just behooves you to hold on. But the oh yeah, the levels are so, like your abilities and weapons at the talking for a little bit. 50s is no joke. Oh my God. Oh. Right, they spawned <laughs> the <laughs> balls the right on them. So yeah, here's one of our augments, uh, just demolitionists. We get these huge ultras that come in and just they're beeline for the ADU. Yeah. Since we're on the first wave, they're Stacey's not going to be really good here. Yeah. You wave 40, wave 50. These guys are tanky. They require a lot of attention. And we'll give uh, some credit in making it look easy as well. Yeah. You know, I, I, like I said, you know, I'm just that guy. He's <laughs> been preparing for this moment. Uh, also, too, actually, let's talk a little bit of build crafting. What are you running right now, Noah? So I'm not, you know, I'm not treading new ground here. I'm a nice talker by heart. I got my Grafalcons on. We actually. Off screen, we're figuring out how it's pronounced. But your Falcons, everyone, so anyone who mispronounces it, that's how you say it. Um, doing that, I love Barry Bloodline. It's a great weapon uh, from you know, Warlord's Ruin. I love the Catalyst. And, you know, I'm just doing that because we might see some Tormentors, you know, who knows? Who knows? And I like precision when we're doing that because, you know, rockets aren't very effective. Again. See, over the past uh, day or so, as we've been getting prepared for the stream, I'll admit my, my jealousy for Buried Bloodline has only been growing. I'm a big fan of Graviton Lance. We get along very well. But I got to say, the precision that you've been getting out of, of Buried Bloodline makes me uh, upset that I haven't just gone ahead and buckled down and gotten the farming done to get that thing unlocked, honestly. Yeah, great. So as we see, uh, we are actually in the pyramid again for the boss. We're taking the fight back to the Witnesses' forces. And this brings up a really interesting part of all of the boss phases where instead of having immune shields or immune phases, we have different augmentations that allow you to increase your effectiveness against the boss. So for example, this one is augmentation well. If you stand in these wells and defeat high value targets, you will actually deal increased damage to the boss for the rest of the fight. That's something 
because these are meant to be kind of like victory laps. Like you've survived against the ADU, it is time to just you single-mindedly take down the boss. Yeah. Interesting. Also, too, actually, really quickly, Tom. So I know we were just, we touched on there being uh, 10 and 50 wave versions, but um, we got a question in chat from from Tier Let's go, Loss. Um, is it or level 50 Do You get to bring your own fire team in both. So playlist is random matchmaking, or you can bring your fire team in, yeah. and then I, I believe the the challenge modes of which there was a normal version and like a, a hard version, which yeah. goes up to GM. Uh, I, I believe that the, the the normal version is is match made. Um, we can correct on socials maybe for the second one. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it's match made, but you, I, right. I think everything supports fire team fighting. Cool, awesome. Yeah, yeah obviously. Uh, and honestly, too, it, it never hurts to bring in your own GM crew if you're pushing 50 yeah. waves. No, uh, it, it, we, we definitely want you to communicate yeah. in, in that activity on the, on the upper end, especially. It's, you're you're going to have a much better time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Also, too, actually, while we're kind of on that subject. So you do move you around the map, earlier, guys. Was, you know, kind of one of the goals, I think, from a design standpoint you were mentioning was that it's kind of just easy to get lost in this activity. You know, the combat sandbox that Destiny has, sometimes you just want to throw down and just test new builds, go crazy. And this is something that really seems to facilitate that. Yeah, you, you might even feel it on the stream here. As we, we're going to go deeper and deeper here, like we're on the, we've defeated the first set now. Mm -hmm. We're on the second set. It's uh, essentially doing, the control like, points that you do. Defensive location you can see here. That's crucible, near the river you know, walk in, uh, here, and like yeah, we're going to break the fourth wall. We uh, <laughs> we're developers, so we were able to change it to our other faction. It's not always going to be fallen. We have the high that were shown prominently in our poster art. Oh, that's right. Yeah, for the uh, the nice. more keen eyes at home, they may have noticed that behind the scenes, the faction has changed. So uh, when when Jerome mentioned it earlier. Every single one of the, the armies at the, the, the Witness's behest is going to go ahead and be a part of this fight, potentially. Or which ones are they, rather? Or if you don't mind me asking, I should say, Jerome. This is your... Favorite. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got Fallen and, uh, and Hive are going to be pressing the last city, but the Taken are definitely uh, active elsewhere. Yeah. They're sort of the... They're being marshaled for other purposes, which I won't. Uh, other elements of the seasonal mention. story are yet to be revealed. We'll let that obviously uh, uh, uncover itself. That percolate on naturally. Yeah, there's there's plenty for the lore hounds out there to go well, ahead and discover. Who is it? Uh, Jerome, like... also too, when you're putting together a story like this, you know, obviously kind of helping us realize what the witness's mission is. Like, what was kind of some of your inspiration as you kind of looked at this activity and the opportunity it presented to the narrative team? We always start with the characters like the emotions of the characters, what, mm -hmm. from their perspective, how they would see things, how they would react. Certainly. Um, and so that's what made Shaxx a natural fit for this. It's such a gear-focused um, activity. It's so ferocious. Mm -hmm. We needed a voice that matched that level of intensity. Yeah. And so that's where we uh, where we came up with Shaxx. Yeah, Shaxx is like the perfect hype man Honestly. for this, right? Um, it's so great when you get later in the rounds and he just kind of makes you feel like you can keep going. <laughs> I mean, that's that's his goal, right? The Crucible is not a forgiving place and he's there bringing folks in every single day that he possibly can. So He's been preparing sense. us for this. That's what the yeah. Crucible yeah. is for. No, and that's a great way to look at this. The Crucible is, is, is preparing, you know, fighting other Guardians to sharpen ourselves to, 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 to you know, fight a war. And this is just fighting a war. <laughs> yeah, honestly, this is what we've been sharpening ourselves for. You know, yeah. this is that moment. Uh, also, too, kind of in that theme, uh, we got a question from Cozy Spartan in chat. Are there any other weapons that are coming back? As a quick reminder, we're gonna. This is the first of actual three, or actually three streams as well. So next week we're gonna be talking about that. So make sure and mark your calendar and tune in then. Uh, today this is just a taste of onslaught and kind of a, a first look at what's to come in the brand new activity. Joining us with Destiny 2 into the light. Out of money, I'm broke. No. <laughs> all out of scrap already? Yes. I bought one thing. <laughs> I suppose I spent it all on these two turrets, which have been. Performing pretty well, actually. Yeah. I, I, I'm a person, I prefer to upgrade a few things because their effectiveness is uh, you know, much more heightened when you upgrade it. So I feel like if you all pool your resources to make a few traps really good, that might serve you well, but mm -hmm. you know, who knows? I know when you do legendary and you're in GM, you're really gonna need Does those that do uh, self damage, to help I wonder? you out because those enemies are powerful and they are focusing down your ADU unrelentingly. Yeah. All right, so we've touched on there are three different defensive tools at our disposal between the turrets, the trip mines, and obviously the decoy sweet bot. Uh, and those are upgradable, if I remember correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Cool. Uh, how far did those go up? Like what level? Three. Three? Awesome. 
And uh, as I understand it too, there's a pretty steep progression as they go ahead and continue leveling up. That scrap really ends up being worth it. They become more expensive, but yeah, they also like, it's not like a linear progression, it's more logarithmic. They, yeah. they kind of jump up in power. Yeah. But you gotta keep them safe too, right? The enemies, like you, you might get an augmentation where like one of those big knights or big uh, fallen captains comes in and just smashes them. Yeah. And so you, you definitely want to try to keep the space clear. Yeah. A brig drops in from low orbit and that just smashes it into bits. Yeah. yeah. It's been known to happen. Who knows? Yeah. Now, in that instance, if one of your defenses is destroyed, do you repurchase it at level one? Yes. You have yes, to you you lose that. that oh, that wow. Progress. Yeah. And that's one of the things you have to watch out for with trip mines. You know, like I said, they have charges and they will just, you know, they will go out on their own, but th that's why they're so cheap. You're going to have to rebuy them once you run out of charges. Yeah, and also I think I saw a question in chat. I missed the name, so apologies to whoever asked this. Uh, is scrap individual or is it fire team wide? So it, we've got an interesting way of doing it. So the the fire team earns scrap together, mm -hmm. but you each get to spend individually. Oh, so, so you can't mess up uh, your your fire team uh, mates by like overspending. You've got your own little yeah. stock, your own little wallet, yeah, of purse uh, of scrap to spend. Uh, so you can coordinate if you want, or you could just spend how you see fit to help the team. Yeah. In general, like anything you purchase is just going to help. Yeah. As someone too, like in the past, I've played, you know, personally, like a lot of wave best wave based defense games. There we go. Um, when it comes to the upgrades, I imagine, like you were saying, it's pretty logarithmic. Is there a feeling of wanting to, instead of getting, you know, three level one turrets, three level one turrets, get one level three turret, for example? Like, is that power gain kind of the one you want to be chasing if you're pushing those higher levels? I think it's definitely valuable to do that as yeah. long as you can keep it safe. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah like, sometimes it might be better to spread out. Does it physically yeah, change, I wonder. The, but like, a lot of that's going to vary, like which the which augments or which enemies are coming in. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to control that. You're just going to have to react like it might be. Yeah. This might be an easy wave of just some thrall. Yeah. But it could be a bunch of exploder shanks, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just we stay the same and just do more exploder damage. Shanks into a wave. Who on earth would possibly be responsible for that? <laughs> you can blame Noah. I, I, you can blame me for drop pods. You can, you can blame Noah. <laughs> I've done a lot. That Everyone who spoke to their therapist about Cabal drop pods, you know, can go ahead and that directly to Tom. You can follow him on Twitter uh, right now. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> uh, Noah, out of here, or pardon me, uh, Jerome, out of curiosity too, when it comes to kind of the seasonal story and where this fits in. So again, we're digging our heels in, fighting against the witness, just sharpening ourselves. The next step, pretty much, is just to go ahead and hold out for as long as we can in preparation for that next battle. I'm assuming. Absolutely. We're uh, we're waiting for Crow to essentially build a bridge in concert with uh, Mara, with help from Osiris and others, and. Uh, so it's really the universe is on Crow's shoulders. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't, we couldn't imagine anyone better suited yeah. for the task. Yeah. Uh, Crow has come a long way in yeah. a short amount of time. Yeah. And I think he deserves a, an opportunity to to show what he can do. Yeah. And I think he'll come through for us. Still, uh, still has uttered one of my favorite lines. Yeah, we went ahead and chased him into the next, into the, into the, the astral plane. Well, I just shot at him until he ran away, but your way is better. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like we would be to go, obviously. better than Crow. Uh, all right, Noah, where are we at? What are, you, what are we looking at right now? So right now we're looking at one of our waves. I, like I was trying to say earlier, mm -hmm. we actually have a wide diversity of waves, like as we've seen with the Hive and the Fallen. That it's not just, you know, fighting acolytes and thralls every time we have different Tran is gonna be nuts here, though. So this is a way full of exclusively ogres and cursed thrall. <laughs> cursed thrall are nice because it allows you to chunk the ogres if they're grouped up. Yeah. But at the same time, they're cursed thralls, and as we see, they are just booking it straight toward the ADU. These ogres seem very dedicated to their task out of the gate, honestly. It seems like within a millisecond they're just lighting up anything they can possibly see. Yeah, I think they're really they're really dedicated uh, to the witness, and you know I think they're also kind of stupid. So they're just you know doing what they what they know. I'm not brave enough to say that to an ogre's face, but I respect <laughs> you for being able to do so. Greg is very intelligent. Thank you. So uh, we're seeing another bonus objective here, actually, which is there are going to be pyramid splinters that spawn. That's a great. Now where are they? I think there's one up behind you, Noah. Oh, oh, right here. Look at that. Greg is a scholar. And then if you keep following it kind of leads you away from the space and oh, okay. there we go we're able to get we're able to get heavy ammo which I desperately needed because my very bloodline is out of ammo oh, all right so you shoot uh, those things and it'll spawn so there's in a heavy tension thing. right when those splinters lead you away from the ADU right you need to kind of have uh, split your attention in, in two directions mm -hmm. yeah that's the thing that we were really wanting to index on so for these critical uh, not critical objectives for these augments, they kind of uh, incentivize players to like leave the ADU and kind of have roles. As we see, we got Splinter Mines and you have guards that are guarding them. We have Clayton and Ashley doing that for me while I defend the ADU. And that kind of means that you have less people defending. Like the, 
the wave is still coming towards you, but there's things you have to do, and, th and those distractions, which aren't really optional, are uh, kind of what gives you that tension and kind of allows for interesting build crafting decisions. Like, that's something I kind of wanted to go into, something that excites me as yeah. somebody who's kind of seen how our seasonal meta kind of develops with things like Strand Titan and Solar over and over. Yeah. I'm interested in seeing if interesting things come out of like Onslaught. You're not trying to stay alive yourself, you're trying to keep this ADU alive, which is a you know object completely separate from you. So like, is Stasis gonna be more useful? We're seeing uh, Ashley use Arc. Uh, she's using Arc Souls, which has proven to be really useful against the Fallen. Like, is yeah. Risk Runner gonna be something people wanna use, or Trinity Ghoul, or Sunshot? Oh. We're gonna, we're gonna forget that happened, that's fine. Yeah. So also, Every when, it, when it comes to the build crafting element, I can probably imagine when you're doing the GM difficulties, like, it's not just your own build you're worried about, but making sure you have that communication across to your team, across champion mods, across uh, element types. Like, there's probably a whole heck of a lot to actually make sure you're keeping track of It happens, man. We all activity. fall. There's a lot going on in the activity from a moment I to moment. I fucking fall all the time. A bunch of different wave types, augments, you know, different squad compositions and different bosses, as we're seeing, and augments there. So really, like, build is king. Like, you're still shooting, shooting bad guys. You using your abilities, using space magic, but it's all a matter of like how you use it in each situation. Like maybe you want something more offensive when you're fighting a boss yeah. or you know, bring in that spark and rift, but when you're in the ADU, you might want something that'll help you hunker down. Actually too, no, we're on that subject of augments. Uh, something you mentioned yesterday I thought was pretty cool were boss augments as kind of the levels continued to progress. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So we just did an augment just now that had uh, capture points spawn in the arena. Oh, we have one right here. And what that does is that calls in uh, turrets that will eventually come and help us out. If we call both of them, they'll all activate and that serves to kind of get some heat off of you. Yeah. And just overall kind of help like, these are level three turrets, you know, you see they're in blue, they're looking really nice and mm, spiffy. They yeah. do physically change. And again, you were saying at level three, the fire rate also increases? Yeah, in the fire rate, health and damage increases. Very nice. Them, but they cost 6,000 scraps, so you're gonna need to save up a lot. Okay. I think it's 12,000 scrap Turn altogether. seems substantially like better than anything else. One. Can you just roll that leftover Shrieker Eye into some enemies maybe just for the, oh, it fell Where'd off. Where'd it go? All right. Go pull. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the void calls. All right, so what level are we on now? Out of curiosity. We're on wave, wave 20. 20. Was that 20? Okay, cool. Yep. Awesome. Man, this is going well, honestly. Uh, yeah, I will say, uh, especially after yesterday, we learned that Noah is one of the most dangerous to ever wield the two thumbsticks out there. <laughs> uh, to all the PvP streamers as well, go ahead and challenge him openly on the internet. Hey, I go yeah, flawless, I was, you know, <laughs> check my KD. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought you were the gilded one. I, well, I don't want to brag, but as a four times gilded flawless, uh, I mean, I'll let you guys brag for that. Wow. Hey, I'm going to brag too. I got, I got Riven's Bane back in Forsaken. Petra's run, that was tough. You know, all my Riven's Banes out there, we know what's up. Oh. And Shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, got it. There's, a, there's a, a chapter of everyone's dream journal dedicated to that particular time in their lives, obviously. My man's got ELO. Drop the bungee ID, they're saying. Perhaps, <laughs> I'll leave that up to him. That is his. Oh, I can do it. No, I'll do it. Check my rave report. Check my dungeon. I, hey, I'm there, bro. <laughs> Noah is ready, honestly. He's prepared <laughs> for this moment. Uh, let's see here. So new ADU, new location? Yep. Yes, well, that's something I neglected to mention. So every time you do a boss, you will actually change locations, and let me just buy something real quick because so I have money. But the, uh, the defenses you pick, like that you placed before in your previous locations, those will still be active. So that means that you building up your defenses over time. You obviously can't upgrade these since they're not at the location you're on, but they will help you when the waves get harder. So you having a level three turret or level three decoy somewhere, that will actually help you out, and you'll be able to take aggro from the waves. Like we see, hey, the, the turret right there <laughs> doing damage to the knights. That, it all kind of helps that feeling of feeling like you're the vanguard and the last city, like you're helping to defend them. Yeah. These emplacements are permanent and not just temporary. Okay. You're really, really digging the trenches and setting yourself in. Okay, well, again, uh, we'll put that on the list of things that chat didn't see. We get a veto. <laughs> That's the one that everyone gets to forget. Sorry, chat, but that didn't just happen. Everyone uh, makes mistakes, man. Also, too, actually, uh, JR Bizzle in chat asks, uh, are the rewards going to be tied to the wave you get to? Now, I know Noah kind of mentioned this a little bit when he was referencing the coil earlier, but, you know, obviously there's a, uh, between the level 10, or pardon me, the 10 wave and the 50 wave versions, you know, what's the reward story for each one? So, in, in all the activities, every time you beat, 10 waves and you beat the boss, you'll get a chest. You'll okay. Get rewards. So every 10 waves, yep. you get, okay. And then in the uh, the challenge mode, there's a normal and the hard version of those. In the normal version, you'll get, uh, you get a normal chest all the way until the last wave. You can beat the final wave. Yeah. You'll get double rewards. Oh, okay. And then if you play the, the hard mode, yeah. you'll get, you get uh, additional rewards in all the waves. Excellent. Okay. And, and so like, 
there's some little surprises there too we might have along the way that, that, yeah. uh, at the end as well, just if you're lucky. Excellent, yeah, for the ones that are really gonna go ahead and try it a few times out, maybe there's an additional variable thrown in there from time to time. Excellent, yeah. Um, okay. Also too, actually, uh, Kurt Jones 29 asks, how do revives work in this activity, both between normal and legend? So that's actually a great question. Um, as we see now, there is not, oh my good lord, Wait, give me a second, give me a second. <laughs> what a great time to think critically, <laughs> the tormentor on your doorstep. I, I can answer that for Noah, no, no take down the tormentor. Um, <laughs> the, the way oh, the revives work ah. is like in the uh, it, the first two sets, yeah. darkness is off. But when we get to the third set, we yeah. turn darkness on. And so extinguish. We're only on go wave down, 23, guys. the ADU goes down, the activity's yeah. over. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So you just take the rewards you got for the two. And in Legend, that that's on by default. Yeah, you don't lose any rewards. Every every set you complete, you'll get rewards. Yeah. Uh, but if you're halfway through a set and you fail, yeah. that's it. That's it. God. Just take your lunchbox and Die. go home. Yeah, well, you can hop right back in the playlist. Or that's hop right back in with your friends and yeah. try again. Which is what I'm going to do, frankly, yeah. honestly. Like, I, like when when this was getting developed behind the scenes here, and was, we were kind of getting a sense of okay. what the Into the Light was going to be, I got to no, tell you, like, just the... The, I don't know, the ability to just go ahead and keep diving back in, testing new builds. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has every single one of their loadout slots filled with some hyper-specific loadout that I'm deeply in love with in its own way. And so I feel like this is the exact right time to go ahead and just continue diving in and just, you know, bolstering those loadouts to begin with, with the Brave Arsenal, which again, we'll be talking about next week, don't you worry. Uh, but also too, is just get the chance to go ahead and really see how they can they can thrive in environments just outside of, you know, even as difficult as GMs can be. Find something that really pushes it beyond that standard level that we're used to. Yeah, and you're, you're going to need to be ready for a lot. We're trying to throw a lot of variety at you, right? There's yeah. a few combatant factions that you're going to be facing in the Fallen Hive that can randomly be in there when you start the mission. There's the, the, the multiple defensive locations, and there's, like, the, the progression of the waves. There's augments. The, all these things are kind of working in, together in concert to, like, test your ability to coordinate as a team and in your build game, too. Excellent. Uh, also, too, actually, uh, Optimal Pickle in chat, wonderful name, I might add. Uh, is also curious, I know we just talked about scrap gathering, obviously, and how everyone kind of gets their own purse. Are you able to gift that scrap to other people? You just get your own purse as a result of You just get your own purse. Gift the scrap, yeah. but you can both, uh, like if someone uh, places something else, you could upgrade it. Oh, okay, you can coordinate. Got it. Your spend. They can drop the level two. You can upgrade, or they yep. can drop the level one. You can upgrade it to level two. Yep. Nice. Very good. All right, that communication is going to be. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple and fast. Like we, we didn't want to have like we did a lot of work to make sure it was as streamlined as it could be because currency can get complicated if sure. you're not careful about it. In the heat of battle, honestly, yeah, it's like a uh, sweeper. Yeah, whatever. Wants yeah. to open their wallet and be like, you got a five? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> can you break three thousand scrap? <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> I'm getting shot here. That's right. Just a little bit. It's okay. Well, Chad, I don't yeah, know if this is going to be the that. only map it's going to be on. This just could be the map that they're showing See, right now. We're getting up there know? in the ways and they're getting a little bit more beefy. <laughs> yeah, you guys are, are uh, murdering your way through. This is going great. I mean, it looks fun. I'm, I'm going to do it. The, the I'm thing play. I really appreciate about Onslaught, other than like the fact you can get lost in it, is like, <laughs> yeah. this is just going to be a great place to go. Yeah. And and just like, if you want to do bounties, if you want to do triumphs, you've got yeah. you know, things it's you want to level It's going to test a lot like, of different oh, builds. Man, builds like, that, again, like I mentioned a second ago, like, yeah. the you'll, you'll Titan, really Glaive, have, like, Titan you know, Exotic Glaive and Helmet Saint 14 to set up like blind points. Have you done everyone? You can leave the opening gates of Grasp of Avarice, finally. I would assume there's going to be more maps. Or Shirochi, you don't have the farm there anymore. Don't and I, I would assume wish. they're all going to probably be... Yeah, and, and some waves are really, like, well, hard, and other waves, like, you, if you've got a bunch of guys coming down a hallway, actually, yeah. Yeah. Just this, this makes sense because the last city... Your ammo, and it feels awesome. Yeah. Really, like, you have that peak power fantasy. Yeah. It's also to... Uh, Maybe no, one on Bannerfall? Some, some in chat probably one on Bannerfall, if that's big enough. Uh, I don't know why people are asking about a bungee dev fighting champion mobs. I don't know if that's a reference to something, but you'll have to remind us in chat. I don't know if I recall that moment, necessarily. Oh, oh, I know what they're talking about. I'm telling you, I'm that guy. I'll, dr I'll drop the bungee at. I don't care, man. Check me out. I believe you, honestly. I envy that level of confidence. Yeah, I, I'd be dead. I hide in the background. I have my, my name in game is just Andy, and I hide amongst the, the field of other Andys with all of our little hash numbers at the end of our name, honestly. Though if you see the one with the dead man's tail, you, you know that's me for certain. Great this weapon. The guy that's going to 1v1 the overload, so everybody. So I'm stylish. ready to see it. It's just like my favorite gun in any video game ever, honestly. It's so really, really good. Uh, though, then again, we get along pretty darn well. Okay, so we're back on the pyramid ship. Yes, also every two. six waves, actually, you're gonna... Six, thank well, you. Well, on the sixth wave of each thing, so six, 16, 26, 36, you know, et cetera. Okay. You will take the fight to the witness and have a cool little encounter that's, you know, it's, it's, it feels like an action movie. You're, yeah. You and your team get to run down against waves, uh, against waves of combatants, you know, in this hallway, and then there's an invincible warden at the end, and the only way to dispatch him and move on is you have to dunk in the wrist. 
palate cleanser. Oh, and he pushed me. Little, little breather. Yeah, absolutely. Get all the waves. Also, too, actually, you know, Jerome, from a from a lore standpoint, you know, from a mechanic standpoint, obviously this helps, you know, make sure that we're pushing forward in the activity and we've got a, a, an appropriate challenge. But why are the Guardians able to go ahead and even head back into these pyramid ships to go? Ahead? It took us a long time to gain that power. Yeah. And uh, now the the it's sort of permeable. It can go both ways, right? Yeah. Uh, the witnesses' forces are much more able to access our space, as we can see, right? They're in Certainly. the middle of Midtown. Um, but we are also able to access their space more. Yeah. So um, it's a double-edged sword, yeah. so to speak. They opened that door. Now they can't take That's it right. The yeah. Guardians are going to be in there, emoting right. and meddling okay. and having a grand old time. <laughs> see? There we go. Let's go ahead and flex your raid emotes. It's all right. Let's get it out of the way. I say that bitterly jealous because I don't have any of them. I'm gonna play it, guys. All right. I mean, the, oh my yeah, this is starting to. I don't think we get okay. spicy out here. It's kind of right. giving me like forged <laughs> vibes, in, guys. <laughs> but but more difficult. So we're just making it more or, uh, or more at least difficulty progression. Yeah, we totally aren't trying at all. It's super easy. I just know I'm gonna turn a corner and there's gonna be the cursed thrall like <laughs> right there. <laughs> you see it? Oh, all right. I got. Uh, Alt tab, blue. Oh, alt tab. Alt tab. Okay, all right. Yeah. I was about to say, I was like, oh, I got alt tab again. I was like, is that building out? Yep, everyone. The screen, yep. Also, too, uh, just go. for everyone's awareness, too, uh, we're here live in the dev environment. Uh, so what you're seeing is obviously a quick peek behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, we're obviously working off of a dev build right now. Nice. And doing the finisher appropriately on thralls. My favorite is the like quick draw gunslinger one. Yeah. Hunter, I actually just bought it. I was like, I need it. The solar one that kind of does like, yeah. the, the twirl around like, his finger. Oh yeah. I, I was like, I need that. So, <laughs> I'll give up anything. I I got it. The I think it was was it Guardian Games last year where you got the chair to go ahead and just send him flying <laughs> at a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> Sorry to be Never the chair. gets old. Yeah, absolutely never gets old. Yeah, that's like Ashley and Clayton are just carrying me right now. They're going crazy. Uh, I mean, it is their job to be good. I mean, they're they they've been doing this for yeah. months. They, I mean. They don't really have the, the technically the world world's first, but yeah, the, yeah, we're the we're the world. That's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, in our hearts. We're no, it, it really that's gonna be, be for players, right? We want yeah, certainly. all of you to be able to hop in this again. Yeah, this is available for all players. Yeah, which is also really exciting. It's kind of like a, a big gift from all of us here My at Bungie to all of you uh, out there, all of our guardians, our community. Yeah. So, yes, thank you. We're excited to. to I'm liking that to, density. You know, you know, you, you it looks buff to take on the witness. Turret yeah. locations oh, are also really you know, good. It's not going to be easy, obviously. Yeah. Just another to opportunity work. to equip everyone, you know, yeah. obviously. Something I wanted to mention, just to like get a little peek behind the curtain when it comes to uh, our friend Sweeperbot here, is he used to be the best, uh, the best decoy in the game, like better than all his other tiered variants because there was a bug where only the broom would take any damage. And as we see, he's really skinny, so he was like basically nigh untouchable. Functionally immortal Sweeperbot. Oh my god. Must be nice, obviously, just to have your horcrux or whatever it is, right? But it's just his broom this time, as yeah. it would turn out. We fixed it, though. Yeah, it's fair. All right. Yeah, we, yeah. Fair. It'll live on again, another thing that lives on strictly in our hearts. Yes. Um, also, too, out of curiosity, uh, Vadar477 in chat asks, uh, will there be, like, if you have just two people on your fire team and you want to go in solo, is there a private mode you can dive into this with? I believe if you hop in the higher difficulties, you can do yeah. that. Excellent. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So, everyone out there that wants to really challenge themselves, maybe, uh, attempt to solo all 50 waves? Yeah. I think the theory is, our running theory is that it's impossible. I think it's not possible. That's my charge to the community. Can you beat Legend solo by your, like, obviously that's Day one, baby. Day one. Day one. one. You Someone's damn can. right we can. My teammate on the social media team, Mitch, is out there watching while on vacation, so don't you dare be working. I think he's got that challenge cut out for himself as well. Hey, I've learned not to underestimate the Destiny community at all, especially, like, in Mission Whetstone. I thought it would take a lot longer for people yeah. to do that. That was quick. Yeah. Um, like, so, you know. I mean, honestly, we underestimate good. the Guardians much as the same as the Witness at our own peril. So, obviously, none of us want to do that. Uh, if anything, Hysteric. I'm just excited to go ahead and see this get in players' hands on April 9th. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm so excited to see, like, what strategies people come up with. As we see, we have another augment here uh, yeah. where you are killing Spark Hoarders to spawn a spark. And when you dunk the Rift, it actually does a chunk of damage to the boss, which if you're looking at the mega, at the health bar at the bottom, you will see it does a decent amount. So when you get to bosses that are a little chunkier, yeah. these are ways to do extra damage to them. Oh, jeez, yeah, okay. Great. Not too shabby. I am also. I'll say it again. I'm so bitterly jealous. I don't have buried bloodline right now. Like you're making it look so good. I was no. gonna have to carry you. It's good. It's a good gun, especially if you're on other subclasses. It's just free devour with plus the catalyst. You get devour and weaken 
pretty much on demand by using it. It's also too maybe a small thing, but my personal favorite, uh, just if I had to pick a champion mod, and I know it doesn't work like that, but I do have to give credit to Anti-Barrier, because it's every single barrier. It doesn't matter if it's a Hive Knight shield, doesn't matter if a, if a Taken mm -hmm. Vandal goes ahead and puts their shield up, or if a Hobgoblin goes ahead and, and cloisters up. Like It's just like, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna keep shooting you right in the face. This is oh not God. how this works for you. Oh man, okay. last man standing. <gasps> no! no! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're at a stream veto moments, obviously. Uh, no, no I'm sorry, but this Oh, but you can you spawn right back in? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure yeah. you want to hand out your Bungie ID still? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. I, don't right. I don't back down. I'll leave it to you on Twitter. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. Cooked, I've been there. I've been there. Again, at our own. Gravity's peril, a bitch. We underestimate. So is this, the, is this the final boss encounter in the pyramid for this particular wave? Yes, yeah, so for this particular wave. I think we're on wave 30. I'm curious, can you yeah, not which fail means we're this last. Our last yeah, wave, which is, I, I guess you can. Is they the just, there was no, yeah, a, there was no tally on lives, at least in this month. Yeah, but we're going to victory dunk lap and this kill it in one shot. Trial. Here we go. Oh. There we go. Uh, okay, so, and also, okay. too, is that that, gotcha. um, that dunking mechanic that does extra damage to the boss. That's just a, is that like a modifier that kind of gets randomly yeah. added with each particular boss? That's one of those augments, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Got cool. another hung jury so there's there. There's no guarantee you're going to get that one necessarily. Nope. Even better. Excellent. All right. Guys, let's do the Evo. No. <laughs> uh, all right, let's keep running more waves. Also, too, actually, uh, I, I saw a question pop up in chat. Again, I apologize. I missed the name. Twitch chat is moving fast, but thank you to all you Guardians for joining us. Uh, is there any kind of a timer present in this activity, or do you just get to dive in and take your time? The only timer is actually present in the purchase phase. We want to keep, mm -hmm. kind of keep that fast place flow going. Yeah. But otherwise, we just have the timer ticking up to see you know, how long your session has been. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no timer. We, you're not, we're not counting down like yeah. 10 minutes to beat a whole wave or something. Yeah. The, the only real fail condition is, 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 is the fire team alive mm -hmm. and is ADU still standing? Got it, okay. And again, once the ADU is gone, that's it. That's it. Okay. You yeah. lose on wave one somehow, that's yeah. it. Generally, right. we want to be pretty clear about our failure conditions. We don't want to stack. Yeah. A bunch of like, like, oh, you have to do That's it. fair. There's like a A and B and a C, not, nothing like that, okay. And again, you're only defending it's one ADU that kind of will transition. Only position. the current ADU, it will, keep, it will move with you. Got it, okay, thank you. That's perfect. Uh, also to chat, I see you asking for information on the loot to, to show us what weapons are on the way. Tune in next week, we'll have plenty for yeah. you. I can mm. promise you that. Okay. Next week for weapons, guys. We've seen yeah, Jury and Midnight um, 2. If you go into the lore, Shax is working with um, some folks, some characters from the past. That's right, yeah. And also opening up his private reserve Interesting. Uh, for our use. Yeah. So, so is, this also, is this something Shax has been sitting on for a while, or has he been working on this behind the scenes? Well, there have been some, some weapons that... Yeah. Uh, have been frowned upon in the crucible. Sure. Yeah. And uh, but now's the time to bring those bring those out. Yeah. Anything Vanguard that... outlawing stuff is not something we have time for at this point. Exactly. Yeah. And if it uh, if it's dangerous, now's the time to bust it out. All the better. Obviously. You know, yeah. high risk, high reward. That's how I see it. And we, if anything, are facing down our biggest risk in the witness so far, obviously. So making sure that Shax goes ahead and opens those coffers, uh, nothing short of generous, I'll say. Just. Do you have improved uh, ability at regeneration right now, or are you just that good? No. Uh, that's what, I feel like you you're not you're hearing that. me. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you have mentioned that once no or twice, actually. I don't know. <laughs> no, maybe place an unhealthy amount of destiny. Sometimes I will, I not even sometimes, oftentimes I get off work and immediately I'm like, okay. I think there was that a was on there, Noah, by the way. I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, that's <laughs> but I immediately get on and play. I'll, I do raids and dungeons. I, I mean, I've been doing a lot of the coil recently. Yeah, I, uh, my, my, Ross my dad and I end up playing this game a lot, and so basically every single day after work, it's That's just cool. like us texting each other, being like, hey, so when are you, when you hopping on? When are you done with dinner? Red <laughs> Death is back? I imagine we'll probably more so do the easy modes, but I've got my, my Nightfall crew I'm sure I could dive in here with. From Although, this honestly, game mode? At this point, he's, he's more loot paid, my dad, than any of us, so I think he'd have no problem diving in here. That's awesome to hear. That's what Destiny is all about, right? Yeah, yeah it's Bringing people fun. together? Yeah. yeah. All right, that's getting pretty intense. Uh, let's see. Sure Red Dead is as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we can mention this one, but is uh, Tom? Is there a light level increase within to the light, or is this still at 1830? I believe it is. It is at the current power. Current power. Cool. Yep. All right. That hasn't changed. Thank you, Nikki Knight. For that question as well. Oh, it's time. I can make. Is it time? A super. T okay. No. I don't have enough for that. Nice. How much scrap are you sitting on? <laughs> I get oh, the numbers 5, up, fellas. Okay. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm too late. I think I appreciate it. I think they've been 18 tiered. 
I want to say obnoxiously good. It's like it's always like, man, we appreciate that. You guys are just stealing our job. <laughs> Wanna write tweets? No. What's this, Minai 2 1830? They could be playing on a dead build though. Remaining intense. And again, we're still fighting the hive. We were fighting the fallen earlier. Oh my please. So there will be oh, multiple they are playing on a dead build, so, so the levels could just be different. This activity out here. Yeah. This minute, it's it's actually super I don't run. think we're going to have yeah, to level yeah, yeah. up the We're going to head and just swap that over just yep. so folks can get a, a look. You know it's getting harder when uh, Noah stops flexing. I know, right? Yeah. He's actually okay. Having, uh, There's a lot going on, you know? There is. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fairness. And I think also, too, this is something we sort of touched on yesterday when we were doing our initial playthroughs, but uh, especially when you get to these higher levels and it's not just kind of the, you know, the, the proverbial, comparatively speaking, walk in the park that the first few are, like, you really got to keep your comms crisp with your team. You got to make sure that you're really aligning, um, not even necessarily your, your champion mods, but maybe sending your scrap to one part to really go ahead and stymie the bad guys there so you can focus your attention, your abilities, your supers on another lane. Um, actually, also, too, to that end, uh, obviously, the, 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 you know, pyramids have been doing some terraforming, but... Um, you know, Tom, when you guys were building this activity, how are you guys going about even changing these maps? It looks like you guys have changed the architecture in some pretty significant ways. Uh, yeah, so so when we looked at these maps, right, we want to have like a bunch of- That turret is doing so much over there. Enemies <laughs> kind of like attack the ADU from, and they give you like these fronts that you have to divide your attention. That turret's yeah. going awesome. in, baby. You really have to be like, oh, they're coming from the left, they're coming from the right, you take yeah. this way, I take that way. Yeah. And yeah. like uh, a lot of times in, the, in the, these maps, they're great for PVP, Yeah. but they didn't have the lanes we needed and the artists and the designers working together like, oh, like what if like the pyramids yeah. just like evaporated this building right here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like great. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and that really we, so we had to open up some 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 channels in here and like that You know, we got the great, you know fictional context where we can be like, no, it's yeah. forces. It's not you know, yeah it's not Stop does, yeah. does look like it, it escalates quickly right, in terms too, of I'm, I'm guys. getting some word from the traveler in the sky uh, No, I hate to break it to you, but we have come to the end of our gameplay segment You must re return from your throne world. I think I perform pretty well I think I, yeah. I'll be the first to agree with you especially because I don't want to have to face you down in this activity I want your help honestly when yeah, I we'll just 1v1 in yeah. crucible sometime yeah, and also too is I think uh, I, I think we can say that, but this is going to happen. We maybe won't say where, but this isn't the only location that players are going to have. Yeah, there's a lot available. Right. To them. Yeah, there will be more than that. Obviously, uh, Noah, welcome back from the th throne world. It's good to see you. I got a lot of tithes. It's, you know, I'm feeling like I feel like Eris and I are comparable right now. So you're going to turn into a hive? Never mind. I won't want. I don't want to attempt turning into a hive god. That's fine. We'll leave that for your. That's own the next expansion. Obviously, that's true. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> But no, Noah, thank you very much for taking us through that. Yeah, uh, thanks and for having of course, me. for everyone here in Twitch chat, thank you for joining us. But before we go ahead and head on out, uh, you know, we obviously, this is just kind of the first look at what's to come in Destiny 2 Into the Light. Again, as a reminder, we're going to be doing three streams showing up all of this content that's going to be coming out available to all players. Uh, and of course, before we go ahead and head off, uh, you know, Tom, you guys have all worked so heavily on this activity. Uh, Tom, we'll start with you. When Onslaught releases, when it gets in players' hands on April 9th, what are you most looking forward to? I really want to see what players do with the defenses. I want to see like yeah. what, what their strategies are. I know Noah's got his strategies. I've got mine. Maybe mine are a little less developed than his. <laughs> um, and, and just to be able to like see. Also, it's a great time to get back in and play. It's yeah. going to be a great time to play Destiny. It's going to be like new activities, tons of rewards. Um, it's it's going to be fun. I'm going to be hopping in with, with you know me, me and my sons. It's yeah, gonna that's going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, Jerome, as someone who's gone ahead and helped craft this story to bring this to life, obviously, to make sure it fits into the Destiny universe so well, uh, what are you most looking forward to when this releases on April 9th? Uh, first of all, people getting absolutely hyped out of their minds for the final shape. And I want to see what builds arise out of this. It's a kind of a different strategic calculus yeah. than we've seen before. So I want to see how the uh, players innovate and uh, deal with this new challenge. Strategic calculus. I'm going to file that one away. That's the narrative team, everyone. Jeez, just making us all look bad. Uh, and of course, Noah, you know, you've, you've helped brick by brick put this together, this brand new activity. Um, you know, as someone who's obviously spent a ton of time playing it in addition to developing it, you know, when it gets out into the wild, when you've got the chance to play it with your friends, what are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward to just getting my reps in, seeing how far we can get, especially on Legend, get extra rewards, have extra difficulty, yeah. just have fun with friends and trying to see, like, like Jerome was saying, like, what builds arise, like, what cool stories come out of playing things like this. Like we saw, you can have a big tormentor show up and like yeah. all these different things, those little emergent moments are what really makes Onslaught special at the end of the day. Yeah. And I'm really proud of what the team and everyone has done. Like I'm a very small part of a larger team. Teams are way better than heroes. Yeah, and you're here. You know, everyone has done such a great job building Onslaught and just curating stuff for Into the Light. I'm so excited for what's gonna show up in these next live streams. Awesome, yeah, and thank you guys all three for being here today to represent the team and help us kind of, you know, show this first glimpse at Into the Light to all the players out there. Obviously, it's pretty great to have you guys here, bright and early in the morning.
Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yep. All right, everyone. Well, I believe that's it from us here at Bungie HQ. As a quick reminder, again, we'll be back next week at the same Bungie time. There it is, guys. Same Bungie place to show you some even more content <coughs> about Into the Light, including some returning Guardian favorite weapons, which you may have gotten a glimpse of today, a brand new look at an all new social space as well that you can take your fire team down to, and even more information about upcoming rewards. Before we obviously set it off, I want to again thank our guests here for joining us today, to the entire Destiny development team who behind the scenes right now is working on this content, bringing it to life for all of us. Thank you all so much for your hard work. To Clayton and Ashley, our play testers in the back who went ahead and helped fill out the fire team. Getting some waves. There we go. Thank you very much. To the amazing team of producers who are here putting on the show, thank you all so much. Genuinely, it's amazing to have all of your assistance. Uh, they have the distinct difficulty of making me look good on camera, so believe me, their work is good out for them. And to our team of moderators in chat, you're the real heroes. Thank How you did so you feel time. about this, guys? But How did you feel? In the meantime, again, reminder, we'll be back next week at the same time and place to show you even more content. But until then, take care of yourselves. Make it a take long, make it a long five-minute poll. Make it a make it a five minute poll. Alright guys. What did we get today? Did we get black armory weapons back that are gonna be craftable? We don't know. But we did see Minaiku. Did we see the D1 Tower? No. Did we see the Whisper mission? No. But did we see Whisper behind Bungie while they were talking? Yes. Is that a sign? Absolutely. Did we see the tribute hall? No. Did we see factions return? No. But did we get a horn mode? Yes. Yes, we did. What what was it that you guys didn't? What what was it that y'all liked? And then what was it that y'all didn't like? I like the escalating difficulty. I thought the escalating difficulty looked really really good. I think what a lot of people didn't like was that this was taking place on Midtown, and we were hoping for like a different setting outside of a setting we already have in the game. I think another thing that I didn't like. I kind of thought we were going to have more freedom on where we wanted to place the turrets rather than static locations that are already preset for us. You know what I mean? If we could have taken multi, you know, maybe a certain amount of turrets, but have the freedom to place them in, in certain areas that would be optimal at farming ads or, or catching ads or even putting a decoy, having that flexibility to place them wherever we want. It's going to get boring real fast. I don't know, man. I, I, I like content that is um, that's challenging, you know? I don't know. It, it, it really just depends on like how much different is each one of the maps going to really be? Or are they all going to be a crucible map? It is interesting though, because some of these maps we've only played guardians against guardians on. So to play against, you know, PVE enemies, it's kind of a different take on it. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.